What's up everybody, Jake here at Off-Road Rodeo, and today I am here with a product from a company called One Car Stereo. Uh, this is their motorcycle intelligent car machine, or their CarPlay motorcycle unit. Uh, this was sent to me free of charge. They reached out, asked me if I would make a video. If they sent me a free product sample to try, I said sure. So all of the opinions expressed in this are my own. Um, One Car Stereo had no input in this at all, other than sending me the free CarPlay unit. So let's take a look at the box here. Let's take a look at everything that's inside. We'll get an initial impression of it all and then dive into everything more in depth. So first thing is first, when we're looking at the box, we can obviously see that this has a bad translation on it. This unit was obviously made in China, I would presume, or somewhere overseas. Um, obviously we can see that there's uh, writing that is not English up top there. That is okay. I'm sure that that's where most of our stuff is made anyway. So that does not matter to me at all. It might matter to some people though. Um, on the front of the box here, we can see that this is advertised as doing CarPlay, Android Auto, and High Car, whatever this is. We'll dive into that more in just a few uh, settings. And then it looks like it does TPMS. And then if we spin it over here on the back, we have a bunch of writing that I actually cannot read. And then a warning before installation, please read the product manual and warranty manual carefully. This product is waterproof design, but cannot be washed by high pressure water gun, cannot be directly immersed in water. This product needs to be installed and maintained by professional personnel. Do not operate the equipment during driving. Pay attention to driving safely. Well, it's a CarPlay unit, so you're going to be using it while you're driving. Uh, if we look right here, this says that we're going to have AI voice monitoring, tire pressure monitoring, motorcycle navigation, six class lens, Sony chip, mobile internet, and real-time positioning. So let's open this thing up and see what is inside. Now, unboxing videos are not my area of expertise, so bear with me here during this. I have this propped up on my AirPods, so if it falls, that is why. So let's take the lid off here. And when we pop the lid off, we are going to see our instruction manual for the L200 Motorcycle Intelligent Machine User Manual, right? Inside of here, Looks like we're going to, oh, wow, we actually have some uh, pictures. And uh, we'll have to look through this a little more carefully in a little bit. But that looks promising. Hopefully it is. We'll come back to that in a little while here. Uh, we have our CarPlay unit itself. And then looks like we have some foam. So let's pop the foam out of here. Let's get rid of that. And let's pull this guy out of here. So this is our actual CarPlay unit which I'll set right here for now. We'll open the box up more and see what else is in there. All right, it looks like we have a handlebar mount and a handlebar control. Oh yeah, look at that. So we have a handlebar control and a handlebar mount. And this is an auxiliary input that plugs into the unit somewhere. But upon initial inspection of this, honestly, it feels pretty good. It doesn't feel, uh, sometimes like some of this plastic stuff can feel kind of cheap. This feels pretty sturdy. It looks like it's sealed. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Buttons have a good click. They're easy to press. Yeah, that's kind of neat. All right, we will put these to the side. We have the mount for the unit because the unit is actually using like the RAM ball or whatever this is called. What is this mount called? I should know. I'm going to put the actual name right here on the screen. But that is the mount that it has, which is actually how my Garmin mounts my handlebars as well. So that's kind of cool. And then we have obviously the power supply for it. So we will take a look at that a little bit further here. But this is the mount for that so that we can mount it to the handlebars. Uh, looks like we have some alternative mounting points for it here, and then adapters for depending on your bar size. Not sure if I'm holding this in the right place. <clears throat> adapters for the bar size that you have. So that's kind of neat. It looks like if you want to put it on your mirror or something like that maybe, um, or if you have one inch bars. Uh, mine are seven eighths, so I'm sure that uh, that is the stock one. Um, 
These look like adjustment knobs. And what they're for, I don't... Oh, actually, I take that back. I believe that these are the TPMS sensors. Yeah, these are TPMS sensors. Hey, that's kind of cool. And then it's going to come with zip ties as well. Uh, off screen here, I have actually opened this box before. I have the uh, power cable from the battery to the unit, and I want to talk more about this in a minute. But uh, that is what's in the box there. So let's dive into each thing a little bit more here. I want to start with the power cord itself. All right, so this is our power cord, and I've cut the zip tie off of it, so it's going to look like a big old mess of wires. But you can see that this is some sort of three-pin plug-in, and it actually has threads on it, so it screws together. So I do like that because I think that that's going to be really sturdy. I think that's going to help keep things together. Um, this cable is actually quite long. My wingspan is around like six foot, six and a half foot. Um, and this is actually wider than my arms. So this is probably about seven to seven and a half feet long. Um, I can put that in meters for you uh, folks in different parts of the world. I'm in the United States and we use feet. Um, now, here's what I don't like. This power cable has three little pieces here. Obviously a positive, a negative, and a ground, I presume, right? Uh, the black is labeled as ground. The red is labeled as accessory. And the yellow is labeled as B+. Now, here's my problem with this. I'm not an electrician, and so I thought, oh, I'll refer to the user manual. This is really going to help me. Um, it provides a schematic diagram, which is very nice. It's helpful. And you can see how this is all going to go together. The power cord is going to attach. Um, I have no idea really how this is going to get connected. I presume that red is positive. Yellow is going to be negative in this case. And then black is labeled as ground connection, um, which would be the white one in this case, uh, or the white shrink wrap, I should say. Uh, but I'm a little bit confused about that and uh, wish that there was a little bit more clarification um, from one car stereo about this in the manual. I've flipped through the pages here and I don't see anything further regarding that. It becomes more an actual function introduction and how to use the TPMS and the control. So in terms of figuring out the wiring, that's all we've got. Again, I am not an electrician, I'm not an electrical expert. Uh, schematic diagrams are interesting, but they mean nothing to me. So I'm going to have to actually uh, take this to a battery and see uh, where I get power from the unit. So that's just one of my little complaints about this right up top. Um, let's move on to looking at everything that was in the box. So this is the unit itself, and it does have a film on it, so we will... Oh man, it's like I review iPhones. I don't. Anyway, this is the unit, and honestly, it's quite sturdy. I like it. It uh, has some uh, little markings all over it. Warning, no high-pressure flushing, meaning washing. Um, it is using the same mounting as like a Garmin. Again, I forget what this uh, mounting style is called. I didn't look it up between takes here, uh, but I will put it on the screen because I know it has a name. And then we have our connection and our auxiliary connection as well. So this is our power right here, and then this is our auxiliary, which is the remote control for the handlebar. So that at least is straightforward and easy to see. We have a bunch of screws here holding this thing together, and I don't see, I don't see like a physical power button. So I think unfortunately part of this is going to be that this is going to be on when the motorcycle is on. Now, I want to talk more about that in a little bit and the idea that I have for powering it, but we'll, we will get there in just a few. Now, we looked at this remote a little bit in the unboxing, but I do like this as well. This has a nice long cable, so you can really get from where the connection is for the unit itself, which will be up on your handlebar somewhere, out to wherever you want this, on your, your you know, out by your levers, um, Maybe you want this, you know, somewhere down on your tank or something like that. You can put this wherever you want. 
Um, one of the things I do find interesting is that it obviously has like a answer your phone call button with a little Bluetooth symbol. Uh, it has an OK, which I assume is for when you're toggling through menus. Uh, it has a refresh, which might also bring you back. Uh, we'll have to see once we get this powered on. It has a uh, uh, re uh, rewind and a forward. Um, but I find it interesting that there's a little button for the camera. And that's kind of a, a weird little quirk about it. And then this does mount off of the handlebar mount. So this is going to slide on just like that. And then you'll use this to lock it onto your bar if that's where you choose to put this. Otherwise, you're going to have to get clever. I don't really see another way to mount this. But maybe there's something out there. And this is the mount with the tool that it comes with. Now, this is actually a safety torx or a security torx, whatever you want to call it. So it does have a little hole right there um, that is going to mate with this right here. And there's a pin in the middle of it so that somebody can't come up to your bike with a Torx wrench or regular Torx and just unscrew this and walk away with it. Um, seems kind of silly to me to have that on there, but I guess I see the point of it. Uh, it's a nice little security feature. Uh, the spring on this is good, but out of the box, this is actually scratched, um, which is kind of a drag, but... It is going to go on a motorcycle that's going to get ridden, you know, on dirt roads and trails and all of that stuff. So what does it really matter in the end? Um, but honestly, it's nice quality. It's like a little aluminum piece. And uh, it'll be a nice little way to mount this onto the handlebars. So actually pretty happy about this. And I already touched on this, but this is obviously how it's going to get mounted to the bars. And then it's going to go to this piece right here. And then it's going to get mounted to the actual GPS like that. So that is how that is all going to connect. Um, but these right here are different spacers for depending on the size of what you are going to clamp this to. So this would be the mirror or some sort of like 12 meter, uh, millimeter um, bar, like a mirror or maybe a crossbar or something like that. And then this is for, uh, you know, one inch handlebars. Uh, this is the one for seven eighths. So again, real straightforward. It also comes with a little rubber shin if you need it and a little four millimeter Allen key so that you can, uh, you know, actually attach this. All right, and then these are the TPMS sensors. Um, I thought that these were little adjustment knobs for something before. But when you look at this, you can very clearly see that this is actually uh, fitted for a Schrader valve. So the sensor must be up top here, and then obviously this is where the valve threads on. Um, it does come with these two little nuts, and then it comes with a little wrench that says TPMS on it, so you know. So this must set these um, on the valve. So that's kind of an interesting little tool that they included. But that's going to do it for everything in the box. But let's go take a look at the XR150. I will pop the side panel off so we can access the battery, and we will figure out what each of these power cables is responsible for, and we will get this thing wired up. All right, so here is the current situation. I've set the stool up right here for us, and I have the motorcycle uh, carplay unit right here. Uh, this is the side of my XR150, so this is the battery that's exposed. This is the negative, that's the positive. And then I have connected the power cord to the unit. I'll show you how that happens here. Like I said, this actually will thread on, so we'll unthread that. We'll disconnect. There's a tiny little nub inside of there on the uh, female end, and then a tiny little uh, cut in this on the male end. So we're going to just line those up. Push these together. And then once it's pushed together, we'll just take this cap and thread it on. And that's what holds this thing together so it can't come undone, which is a pretty cool little feature. <clears throat> uh, so now what we're going to do is take the ends. Now remember, this was marked B+, this was marked accessory, and this was marked ground. And uh, I played around with this off screen here, but I just want to show you that if you take the red and the black, so the black on the negative, red on the positive, nothing happens with the unit. If you take the black on the negative and the yellow on the positive, nothing happens. 
but if you put the yellow and the red on the positive and the black on the negative, which we will do here, voila, we've got power to the unit. So basically, yellow and red are positive and black is negative. So you can do this one of two ways. It's going to come with these like this. You could wire this directly to your motorcycle, but then this unit will be on all the time and it will be drawing power. The other thing that you could do is you could wire these in. You could splice these in to your ignition switch so that when you turn the key on, it will turn these on. The other thing that you can do, which I think I am going to do, is I'm going to cut this actual power cable. So I'm going to wire the red and the yellow together. And I'm going to splice this into an SAE cable with a switch so that I can plug into my battery tender port, the port that I charge off of. And then the switch will have an actual on-off so that I can control when there is power going to it and when there is not. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I might switch it between motorcycles later, and so I don't want to just go ahead and splice this power cable into my ignition switch right now. So that being said, I am going to get this wired together, and then from there I will uh, be able to actually look at the CarPlay unit and test it out. All right, so this is our power cable that will be coming from the battery, and here's what I did. I used some butt connectors, and I have an SAE cable, charging cable, with a switch so that it will not be receiving constant power so that I can use this to power the unit so that I can switch it between motorcycles. So that being said, we can hook this up now, and this baby should work. So let's get it installed on the bike and see if we got this or not. So before I ran this through the motorcycle, I just plugged it into my SAE cable there, my battery tender, to make sure that we had power, and we do, and we can make sure that the switch works, which it does. Turn it back on, and we have power again. So that's going to work perfectly for my application. You can do whatever it is you need to do for yours. Um, let's check this thing out. Let's go to the settings. So we can change the backlight on it so it's auto, light, or dark. I like dark. Uh, language. Um, there's a whole bunch of different languages in here. I speak English, so we're going to keep it in English. We can set the time. Uh, we can also set the brightness. We can set it crazy high, or we can set it medium, or we can set it low. Uh, nice middle ground is good for me. So let's go to 51. Uh, Bluetooth, we will connect my phone in just a minute to this, uh, but I have not done that yet. And then the system, about network, so it can get Wi-Fi apparently. We can restart the system, we'll cancel that, and a factory data reset, so I guess if you sell this or something like that in the future. Um, we won't be able to access CarPlay until the phone is synced, um, but I'm curious about the TPMS sensors. So I'm going to go ahead and take these guys, and I'm going to just screw these in in a second here, and we're going to get a read on what the uh, tire pressure of the tires on the XR150 are. So I installed one of the TPMS sensors, and the instructions here are a little unclear. The pressure learning operation steps. At the beginning of the binding sensor point, the front and rear wheels select the corresponding tire to bind. Screw the sensor to the tire nozzle, after the tire pressure changes, the sensor will match the host, display the tire temperature and tire pressure and voltage, and can also see the monitoring display in the maintenance interface. Learning is completed. Note, the tire pressure sensor is an optional device, and this function is not available without tire pressure installation. So that makes a little bit of sense. Um, basically what I did was I clicked on this guy, and this brought up this menu. So we have a high temperature alarm, high voltage alarm, low voltage alarm, pressure unit. We're going to select PSI because that is what I use here in the United States. And then temperature unit, we're going to select Fahrenheit because that is what I use here in the United States. But we are going to bind the sensors. 
And so maybe I should put the second one on just to make sure. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna put it on real quick. All right, so now I have both of the sensors on the front and rear wheel. So now I'm going to click start. Uh, let's try the front wheel first. I'm not really sure how it's gonna know. So I was able to figure out the tire pressure. So basically you have to open this menu and then it's going to show zero and zero for your front and rear tires. Um, but basically binding in their book means pairing. So pairing sensors. So you'll click start. And then before you even put them on, you're going to do this. You'll click front wheel or rear wheel, depending which one you're doing. Or rebind if you have to redo the connection between them. Uh, but then you will click confirm and then you will go over to your motorcycle with the TPMS sensor and you will screw it on very slowly so that there's a little loss of air and that's what helps the sensor pick up that you've screwed it on and then it takes about a minute for it to fully sync at first mine was showing negative 1.2 psi uh, before it corrected itself to 16.6 .6. and these are probably accurate because my motorcycle has been sitting around for a little bit but um Pretty interesting to see what the temperature is in them and then the voltage reading for the temperature sensor as well. Um, then we can come back here. So you will permanently have this on your home screen then once it is synced. And then, like I said, if you need to resync it, you can. Uh... All right, my apologies. My phone died during the installation of the unit, but I did get it all installed. So let me just show you what I did here. So I have it centered in the middle of my handlebars. It is on its mount, mounted in the middle of my bars, and then I have the actual little clip here kind of angled so that it doesn't come up super far, but is visible in front of my actual uh, speedometer here. Uh, I have the remote right here, and then what I've done is I have run the controls for it, the wire down this way, and then underneath this little dash, and the same thing with the power cable coming from the actual head unit here. I have them zip tied to the bar so that they stay together, but then routed down below. And everything is zip tied down here. So my switch that I made is right here and is zip tied to the upper part of the stanchion and the triple clamp. And then this right here is all bound together with zip ties and zip tied to the main wiring harness that comes through here and then runs all the way back down to here to where my battery tender cable is my SAE cable so that I can unplug this as needed this has a weird adapter because this is some Chinese cord um, so that it gets the uh, flow of the current correct so technically this thing is wired backwards which is kind of a pain in the ass um, I probably should have got a battery tender cable as well anyway that's a different story it's all correct so let's hop on here take a look so if we switch the bike on, our unit does not come on. And that is because I have to hit the power button for my switch. And now it's on. So now with the unit on, you can actually see what we're working with in terms of a main menu. Uh, it's interesting that the front wheel PSI is not reading, but the rear is. We'll have to investigate this in a little bit here. But I have my phone synced to this already, so we can click the CarPlay button and it'll bring us to our main menu here, and then you can see what we're working with. So I've kind of narrowed my menu down. This is what I use when I'm in my truck, uh, when I'm using CarPlay as well. But phone, music, messages, now playing, the home button, which would return us to that main menu, calendar, settings, audible, Gaia, which we'll come back to, Google Maps, MLB, Spotify, and Waze. All right, so that's our main menu here. And then actually, if we go over to the remote, and we click this little button at the bottom that looks like a refresh button that would return us to the main menu and then if we click it again it brings us right back to where we were and then if we actually hold the camera button at the top here it'll lock the screen so that it's inoperable you can't click anything but if we press and hold that it'll unlock it and if it's unlocked then you can scroll through the menu again so real quick, I'm wondering if the Gaia app, because it says routes, 
would let you go to a menu and select a route from your list. I'm wondering if the if the Gaia app would let you choose an offline route. So I'm curious if you could use this offline with a route that you have downloaded to your phone to navigate. I'm going to have to test that out and take it out through Bent Creek or something to see. Um, but that would be a really interesting feature of this unit if that were the case. Uh, let's return here. Um, I'm going to open Spotify, and I'm not going to play any music because it's going to turn the camera off. I'm recording on my iPhone, but you can kind of see. I mean, we can go through and choose our music if we're riding. Um, we do have rewind and fast forward. Um, we can answer calls or decline calls with the phone button. Yeah, it's not going to do anything. And if we press the OK button, it's not going to do anything either. It's kind of like a menu select, I guess. We'll go home and see if it does anything. No. OK doesn't do anything, and neither does the phone button. But that's what we're working with right here. And I did get this to freeze once before, but it hasn't done it since. So I'm not really sure what to make of that. Let's open this up again. I'm curious why our front isn't reading. We'll see if we can bind that again. So I've let this sit for a few minutes and it's not doing anything. So I'm guessing that it's not going to. And so I don't really know what to make of that. That's kind of inconvenient that one sensor could pick up all the time and the other would not. But while we're running through the controls here, let's just take a look. So this is our lock and unlock button. So we can actually lock it on the screen. That must be our Bluetooth signal button, showing that we're connected to the phone. And that doesn't even let me click it. So really, it's super basic. I don't have an Android, so I can't show you anything with Android Auto. Um, but that is the connection button. And that would just bring us back into CarPlay. That's like a please open CarPlay button. I'd go into detail about CarPlay, but I'm sure there's better videos out there really kind of going in depth with it. Um, my favorite thing is being able to control my music, obviously, but then being able to use maps for navigation. So we'll look up, I don't know, Carrier Park, perhaps. Let's look up a coffee shop, actually. Yeah, let's go to the Drupal later. You can see that there's some lag with this unit. You have to make sure that your clicks are defined. Yeah, like I said, this unit is slow. You'll have to be patient with it, and you'll have to make sure that you're really being deliberate with how you use it. Yeah, see, I'm not very happy with this. Didn't search Acropolis. So I just got it to work, and it really honestly took some patience. Um, so I'll be interested to put my gloves on and my helmet on in a few minutes here. I know that I'm going to like being able to toggle between my music through my Bluetooth unit on my helmet, but I think I'm definitely going to get a little bit annoyed uh, with the unit in terms of trying to get directions. But maybe this thing will prove me wrong. We'll get out there in just a few minutes and check it out. So we are out on our way to work right now, and I'm at a stoplight, so I thought this would be a good time to show you. Um, basically, if I hit this refresh button, it'll take me home, and both my front wheel and rear wheel TPMS sensors are working. Um, so you can see what my current PSI is. So about 21 in the front, about 26 in the rear, and you can see the uh, temperature as well. Both of them hovering in the mid 70s. So that's kind of a cool feature. And then I can hop back into CarPlay this way or keep up with traffic here, or by toggling through the refresh menu. So we'll go back to CarPlay, and I can use this with Google Maps, which I'm in right now. 
Uh, probably, I think, if you're using this, you're going to be using it around town. And so something like Google Maps, Apple Maps is going to be probably your primary thing. Um, I do also have Waze on here, so Waze would work. Um, and like I said earlier in this video, the MLB app is on here too, which is kind of funny. But uh, I can get my Phillies updates while I'm on the road. Um, I was playing around with the Spotify uh, and my Apple Music just to see how the control works with those. And it does exactly what you would want it to do. I can skip songs and go back to songs. Um, but I do have to actually use the screen menu to get through. So if I wanted to play something, we'll open Spotify up real quick. So it's loading, loading, right? So if I want to play the Black Keys, I have to toggle into it and then actually start playing. Uh, or access one of my playlists or something like that. Um, and then again, like I said, you just toggle back home. So I'm going to just sit here for a few minutes. Oop, I don't have my buttons tight enough. And I have the screen lock on, so now nothing will work. Which is kind of nice. I imagine, you know, this is probably the way you'd want it so it doesn't change screens or so you don't accidentally, you know, knock maps off of there or something. Uh, when you're riding. So speaking of, I'm going to open Google Maps back up and then we're going to get onto the Blue Ridge Parkway in 0.6 miles. So as we're rolling onto the Blue Ridge Parkway, what I just want to identify here is that the locked screen on or locked on screen as it's reading, um, that little note actually remains. So then that way you know. So that's kind of a I don't know, it doesn't seem to impede your view of the screen or anything, but it's kind of a nice feature. I mean, that way you don't forget, like, you know, oh, crap, I think I missed my turn, and then you're trying to use maps or something, and you're like, oh, it's not loading. No, locked on screen. So, I kind of like that. The other thing I'll say is that it's pretty bright out this morning, as you can tell, and, uh, I have no problem seeing this screen, and I actually have the brightness turned down on it. And I have it in dark mode. And I can honestly see it fine. Um, as is with Google Maps on any CarPlay device, you can see your arrival time, the duration of your trip, or how much longer you have, I should say, and uh, how many more miles you have. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to turn the lock screen off, and then if we use these features over here, I think that you can add that there's something to be cautious of, uh, crash, slow down, construction, lane closure, stalled vehicle, an object on the road, or even a speed trap. So kind of just like ways you can report to Google Maps what's going on. Um, I think that this would let you toggle where you are on the map a little bit. I'm not going to mess with any of that. Well, I guess we're here doing a review, so I should. Yeah, so you can see, if you tap those, you can just toggle to see what's side to side. And then you can zoom in and out on the map as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, it does have volume for your alerts. Mine would be playing through my helmet, but I currently have my intercom turned off. And then I think that this button down here is other routes. So this is the fastest route, and also this is all the uh, only way once you're going this way. So pretty basic, but honestly, like it works well. I was afraid it was going to be a little bit slow, and I think possibly it would be. Let's see. Can we add a stop? Let's exit this these directions to work. Let's go back. And I don't know, we'll plug something else in just in recent searches. <laughs> Knobles Amusement Resort in uh, Eliasburg, Pennsylvania. State College, Pennsylvania. Um, let's just plug in coffee. Coffee is a nice easy search. So I could pick any one of these. I don't know what mosaic is, so we'll pick that. 
Yeah, that's a good one to use. I've never been there. So if we were going to go there, it was fairly easy to route to that. Obviously it's Google Maps, so we could go back and click exit. And then say we're cruising the Blue Ridge Parkway like these fro folks in front of us. We could find our nearest gas station and it would route us there once it finds one. This is a good example because right here on the Blue Ridge Parkway, I have minimal service with my cell phone. So things work a little bit slower. So that's one of the things to keep in mind with a CarPlay unit like this is that it might be a little bit slower. So we got our Ingalls gas station and now we're routed right to it. Nice and easy, real easy to use. I don't know what was going on when I was playing with it the other night, but it was a little bit slow then, but seems to be working fine now. I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's pretty cool. For the rest of my ride here, I'm gonna pop some music on. So I'm gonna just turn my intercom back on. Don't know if you guys could hear that, but that's the little tone to tell me it's on. I'm gonna open Spotify put on Shaky Graves' uh, movie of the week. And I'm gonna cruise the rest of the way to work. We'll tune back in in just a few. So two quick things that I just thought of. Uh, one are, I wish the mount for the remote was a little bit burlier, a little bit stronger, um, or had some sort of actual like, um, like inner, uh, I don't know what to call it, inner washer to go around the bar to make it the size of the clamp. Uh, instead, uh, what came with this was a bunch of little rubber stack grommets and basically you just wrap those around the bar till it's the right length for the thing to tighten down. I don't know. I don't really like that. I get it's so you can accommodate different bar sizes and you know maybe where you're putting it on something. But ultimately I just don't think that that's a really secure method. I'd really like it if this didn't move around when I pushed it. And even just then, I just pushed it out of its little slide. So that's not really a great option either. I guess I could reverse that, but I think this is directional and needs to be pointed this way. Um, additionally, I wish I could control the volume of my music uh, with the remote, but I can't. So just then I put my music on, but it was kind of windy. And so I couldn't hear anything. So, kind of bummed about that. Well, I have to pop into work here, but we will play around with this in uh, just a little bit here. So hang on. Man, that was a long day. All right, we're gonna go home. Let's try Waze this time, see how this works. Let's see, can I type? I live over by the Carmax, so we're going to use that as the point there. Alright. Awesome. Waze looks pretty good on here. But let's get moving here and I'll give you my final thoughts about this for this video. I think we're going to play around with the Gaia feature in the future. But for now, let's get on the road so I can get you those final thoughts. So at night, when it's a little bit darker, like right now it's about 8 p.m., sun's going down, and this is the same brightness setting that I was using this morning. And I think it honestly looks pretty good. It's real easy to see what's going on on the screen. The screen size I think is perfect. It's the perfect size to be able to access your widgets, but then also see your map and actually what's on the screen in general. Um, I kind of like the way that Waze looks on CarPlay a little more than Google Maps. So I think if I was going somewhere, this is probably what I would use. So in conclusion, how do I feel about One Car Stereo's L200 CarPlay unit? Well. I think that this unit would be a good addition to any motorcycle, specifically if you're doing things around town.
if you're riding street, commuting with your motorcycle, running errands, I, I don't think that you can beat this. I think that, honestly, the setup is perfect. It's simplistic in its design. It's easy to use. The remote is convenient. And it gives you a bunch of useful data with the TPMS sensors. Um, but I think that if you're going to be riding off-road primarily, doing dual sport things, adventure riding, things of that sort, I think you'd be better served by a dedicated GPS unit, like a Garmin. I think that this is something that you could use in addition to a Garmin, a good backup, a good simplistic thing to keep the things happening on your phone highlighted correctly, or when you're not using a Garmin, when you are just putting around town and you're not on some sort of long dual sport ride. That being said, there's things I don't like about it. The instructions were hard to understand. It took me a little while to figure out how to power the unit. And then I'm not particularly fond of how slow it can be. I think that when it's getting air on it and it's not overheating, it works a little bit better. But when you're sitting still like I am right now, it's a little laggy. But I think the display looks great. The colors are great. The remote was a great idea. And honestly, the mount and everything is of a good quality. The screen is about the perfect size. And because it's adjustable, much like the Garmin one, it lets you make sure that you don't impede your view of your speedometer, tachometer, whatever you have on your bike. So overall, I think this is worth the money. I rode with this in the rain. I let it sit out in the hot sun. It worked perfect. I had no issues with it. And honestly, I think that if it came down to it, this is something that I would spend the money to buy. Uh, that being said, you would be the one spending money on this. So just know what you're getting. You're getting a unit that's totally reliant on your cell phone. You can use it to use things like Google Maps and Waze, Spotify, <laughs> even MLB app if you're interested in baseball and keeping up with your team. You can use it to answer your phone, check your text messages, see your calendar. But that being said, it's totally dependent on the phone. So if you lose service, this really isn't going to be of much use to you. But if you know that and you're okay with that, then I think this would be useful if you're somewhere where you don't have to worry about losing service. So that being said, I like this. I'm happy with it. I think One Car Stereo did a great job. And honestly, I'm going to continue using this unless they ask for it back. So there you have it, everybody. Thanks for tuning into this. If you have any questions about this unit at all, anything that you don't think I went over well, anything that I didn't mention at all that you'd like to know more about, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. I will be posting a video in the future of trying to use Gaia with offline maps. I wasn't able to do that this time around, but this is more of an initial impressions and uh, short review. So the more I use this, the more it'll give me an opportunity to make a longer, uh, more in-depth review in the future. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for checking this video out, and I will catch you next time.